It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today, I am taking a look at Tatsu. Tatsu here is an abstract game from the same company that made the very popular and very well-received Hive, which is a game I, I adore. Now, Tatsu is very different from that, and, and it feels more like a backgammon variant, really, than anything else. There's dice, uh, it sort of moves in a similar way. Let me show you what I'm talking about here, give you a quick overview of the game, and then I'll tell you what I think of it, and if I think it's a game that, you know, um, that seems like it comes from the same mind and the same company as Hive. So here's what the game looks like set up and ready to begin. The objective of the game is uh, one of two things. You can, you can win either by having your opponent have no dragons at all in the playing area or in the waiting mat back here, or you can kill all of one type of dragon. That is all the vine dragons, the fire dragons, or the water dragons. If you have them all from your opponent, they've all been killed, then you win the game. The way you play the game is uh, very simple. On your turn, you are going to roll both dice, and then you are going to uh, use them. You can use them typically to move or to enter a new dragon into play. And so if I want to move one of these, and by the way, white moves in one direction and the black pieces will move in the other direction. So I could do, say, one, two, three, four, five, land there. If I land in one of the cornerstones that has a dragon pictured, I will earn that dragon from the tray and put it on my waiting area, which means I can now uh, bring it into play later on. So I was one, five. And with the other five, I could move another piece, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. If I had rolled a five and a three, let's say, I could have moved with the first one, landing here, earning this dragon, and then bring that very dragon into play and have the ability to, uh, to uh, continue playing that way, okay? To, to bring it right into play, earning it, then playing it. The opponent would then take their turn, and as I said, they would go the other way, and so we could have this player go one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you land where someone else is, then you are going to affect the dragon underneath you, if it's your opponent. If it's your own, you're just sort of holding the one um, that is underneath you uh, still until you move the one above it, and then the bottom one can move. But if you do it to your opponent, something happens, and that depends on the dragon that that is uh, above the other dragon, okay? If it's the vine dragon, well, you simply tangle up your opponent, and this piece cannot be moved. If you do it with a water dragon, and so if this was the case, then this dragon would go back to reserve, and this one falls to the front there. And if you do it with a fire dragon, well, the piece is eliminated completely, killed, placed out of play, and that is the way that you kill dragons and, again, can, can kill all of one type and win the game. And so you are going to be moving dragons, um, capturing them, trapping them, sending them back, killing them outright, maneuvering where you fall so you can bring these from reserve into your waiting area so you can actually introduce them into the game. You are going to sometimes be playing two of your dragons, one above the other, simply to protect the dragons so that no one, uh, you know, no, none of the other dragons can come along and hurt you. Um, that's basically it. You are going to continue until one of the two uh, ways to win is achieved. There's a couple of other small rules, like, um, for example, if your opponent is trapping you, let's say that is the case, and... I, uh, it is the white player, white pieces player's turn, and we are going to be moving these. I could roll, and I am allowed to, if I'm being trapped by a vine dragon, escape with this one by using the lower of the two dice. So one, two, this one falls to the front, but then the larger of the two dice is spent, uh, and we assume it was wasted in the energy it took to break away from that vine dragon. That is pretty much the game. Player pieces will continue going around, uh, and whoever can achieve either killing all of one kind 
or having uh, their opponent have none on the board or the waiting area, this would still be okay, but none on the board or the waiting area, well then in this scenario, the black pieces would win the game. And that's how you play Tatsu. I have to admit that it took some warming up for me to start enjoying this game, but enjoy it I did, and I enjoyed very much. It's a game that I've decided to keep in my collection. It's a game that I found to be uh, very captivating and very uh, stressful, but at the same time, sort of a soothing game. It's got that feel that, that classic games like Bad Gamma, like that style of game, give me, where uh, there's just a nice flow to the whole thing. And it's quick, turns bounce back and forth uh, fairly quickly, but there's some, some interesting choices for you to make on your turn, even uh, with the luck of the dice. And the luck is there, but... It feels like the the better player, I think, will eventually, you know, will ultimately come out ahead in the game. It does have that, that feel to it. The pieces are beautifully made. I mean, these components are wonderful. They have the same uh, uh, component quality as, as Hive before it. Uh, these are Bakelite pieces, uh, beautifully uh, uh, engraved and stained. The board looks very good. It's well put together. The rules are fine, work well, dice are nothing special, but they're okay. The one thing, uh, really the only thing that I have a major problem uh, with this game is the box. This box is uh, an affront to gaming kind. This is a horrific design. It's one of those things that I assume someone somewhere thought, oh, it's going to look cool on the shelf before you buy it. But good luck after you buy it putting it all back in here and getting it to just look good on your shelf at home and all of that. Let me see if I can show you real quick here how this goes. So you've got this thing and inside of it, plastic tray. In this tray, we're going to be put, putting uh, the, the plastic uh, bits like so. Okay, that's fine. All right, that's cool. It's got a, they, they each have their own spaces. So we're putting these back in here. There we go. All right, cool. And then there's two more that go here in the center. Fine. And then these go there. And then this thing, it has a really weird shape because originally these came in here for display purposes, right? So it had like, you know, these things were in there and then the dice were in these spots here like that, and then this thing would kind of like sit above it. Well, this thing still is necessary because if you put just this back in the box, it all sort of flops out even with the board above it. So you have to fold the board and put it over this thing, and then this thing goes over that, and then I gotta put this thing in here, and it's just, this thing is floppy. And, oh. I hate the box, um, but that aside, the game is wonderful if you're someone who enjoys classic style games. If you like backgammon, this is a home run, go check it out, okay? You don't even have to think about it. I think you're gonna like it. But if you're someone who enjoys sitting down with um, a grandparent, sitting down with a significant other, and just taking it easy, rolling some dice, taking your time with it. You know, it's a game for those uh, lazy afternoons where you want to think a little bit, but not too much. You want to have a little bit of luck, but not too much. You want to have a good time with one another. I think this game is going to, to appeal to that sensibility very well. And so I recommend it. Uh, attractive game. I've enjoyed it a lot. As I said, I'm going to be keeping it because I find it to be Neat, challenging, but relaxing at the same time. That is Tatsu. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.